Samsung's Galaxy Watch Ultra comes packed with some incredible hidden features that Samsung hasn't mentioned anywhere. So we're going to talk about those features and take a look at some other powerful features that very few people know about. You probably already knew that depending on which application you're using on your phone or your watch, you'll see a little icon at the bottom of your watch face showing which application is currently active. And if you tap that icon, it'll take you to the controls for that application. And if you didn't know about this shortcut, then definitely stick around because some of the stuff you're going to see later in this video is really going to blow your mind. The hidden feature I want to point out actually has to do with the controls for media playback. So by default, you have the obvious controls of skipping to your next song and skipping back a song. But what most people don't know is that you can actually hold the skip forward icon and that'll actually skip forward in the music. And if you hold the back icon, it'll start rewinding the music. And this works for any application that supports the media controls on your watch. So here we are in the YouTube application and by default you can just tap to go back 10 seconds or you can hold the skip forward button to skip forward 10 seconds at a time. And if we switch back to the music controls and swipe up, you'll be able to see all the music in your current playlist and skip to a specific song. And instead of tapping this speaker icon, then rotating across your digital bezel in order to increase or decrease volume, you can actually just directly rotate across the bezel right from the control screen. Jumping back out to the watch face, if you have a bunch of activities going at the same time and you tap one of these shortcuts, it'll actually show you all of the active activities. And you can tap one of them to jump back into that specific activity. And if you want to know why a little pinch icon appeared right in the center, stick around because I'll be getting to that a bit later. For a long time, Samsung's phones have supported something called wireless power share, which has allowed their Galaxy watches to charge on the back of their phones. But this year, Samsung changed that with the Galaxy Watch Ultra, and that no longer works. Even if I take the watch bands off and hold it right in the perfect spot, I still get this message that says the charger isn't compatible with your watch. But that doesn't mean you can no longer use your Samsung phones to charge your Galaxy Watch Ultra. You just have to do it a bit differently now. So the new way to charge the Watch Ultra from your phone is to simply grab the charging puck that came with your Watch Ultra and plug it into the USB-C port on your phone. Then put the puck on the back of the watch and you'll be able to charge your watch directly from the phone. This obviously isn't as convenient as putting it directly on the back of the phone, but at least you don't need to bring a separate charging brick for the watch. And you can even wirelessly charge your phone while you're charging your Galaxy Watch through the USB-C port. The next thing we're going to do is unlock a hidden menu. To do this, put your quick toggles down and tap the settings gear. Then you're going to scroll all the way down and tap about watch. Then tap software information. Then tap the software version five times. And you unlock the hidden developer options. Now just back out of here twice and scroll below about watch and you'll see the new menu. And when you tap this, you'll be given some really cool options. If you scroll about halfway down, you'll see these animation scale options. And this allows you to speed up the animations on your watch. So if I completely disable the animations on all three of these, then navigate around on my watch, you'll see that everything happens almost instantly without any animations. Now let's take a look at an equally hidden diagnostics menu on the Galaxy Watch Ultra. To get to this, you first have to have the Samsung Members app installed on your phone. Once it's installed, go ahead and open it, then go to the support tab, then tap the Galaxy Watch Ultra. And here you get a bunch of diagnostic tests. So if you want to test the touchscreen on the watch, just tap touchscreen, and that'll bring up the touchscreen diagnostics on the watch. So if you ever feel like something's not working quite right on your Watch Ultra, just run through this diagnostics menu and it'll help you figure it out. Some of Samsung's built-in watch faces have a hidden night mode that you access by customizing the watch face and swiping over it until you see this night mode option. You can then swipe up or down to either have it always on or have it enable automatically depending on how dark it is. So if I set it to auto and back out of here, then I shut my lights off, you'll see that night mode automatically enables, making the watch a lot easier to read in a dark environment. And if I turn the lights back on, you'll see it go back to the regular mode. If you have a lot of tiles and you wanna get through them faster, you can actually just swipe harder and you'll skip multiple tiles. Or you could obviously just use a digital bezel to get through it quickly too. This next feature is crazy. If you swipe up to go to your applications and then you go to the Play Store application, then tap the search icon and search for the word thermometer. And yes, the keyboard does support swipe gestures in case you didn't know. Anyways, once you have thermometer typed in there, tap the search icon and you'll see this option here called ThermoCheck365D. Go ahead and install this. And when you open it, 
you'll be able to use your Galaxy Watch Ultra to measure the temperature of anything. First, just select whether you're measuring the temperature of water or something else. Then you can choose to take a single measurement or take multiple measurements. From here, just choose the type of material you're gonna be measuring. Then it tells you to take off your watch. And if you swipe over, it'll tell you that you need to keep the watch within two centimeters of the object, which is a little less than an inch. And we'll swipe over one more time and tap check, then tap check again. And after five seconds, it'll take its first measurement. And every time this little meter goes around, it'll take a new measurement. And here's the temperature reading of a cup of ice water, and then the temperature of my skin. If you want to use your watch with gloves on, you can just forget about it because most gloves are way too thick to interact with the watch. But if you hold both the home and back button for a couple seconds, then scroll down a bit, you'll see this touch sensitivity option. And if I enable this and put my glove back on, you'll see that I can now interact with the watch incredibly easily, even with a thick glove on. And if you want a different way to enable touch sensitivity, just pull down your quick toggles and keep swiping across until you see this icon here. And if you tap that, that's another way to enable touch sensitivity. But what if instead of wearing gloves, you just had something in your hand that you couldn't put down, but you wanted to interact with your watch? Well, that's what universal gestures are for. These are gestures that allow you to do a bunch of different things just by making different motions with your hands. To enable this feature, you just have to pull your quick toggles down and tap the settings gear, then tap accessibility, then scroll down until you see interactions and dexterity and tap that. Then you'll see this universal gestures option. Once this is enabled, you'll be able to make a fist twice to bring up the universal gestures. And if you make a fist twice again, you'll bring up the universal gesture controls. And this menu has a bunch of different features. All you do is pinch to go forward and double pinch to go back. Then you can make a fist to accept that action. And if I shake my wrist like this, I can get a little cursor and I can select something just by hovering over it for a second. And to see how these work, just scroll down a bit and you'll see this gestures option. And here you can actually customize the gestures to do different things. So if I tap this back and forth option, you can see that there are a bunch of different options for what to do. And at the bottom, you get this gestures tutorial. So you can see how each gesture works. So if I tap this back and forth gesture, it's gonna show me how it's done. Then I just try the gesture and it'll tell me if I got it right. And if you do a gesture wrong, it'll tell you that you didn't get it right. Universal gestures aren't the only gestures you get with the Galaxy Watch Ultra. If we jump back into the settings and instead go to the buttons and gestures section, then scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see this gestures section with a double pinch gesture, a shake to dismiss, and a knock knock gesture. The double pinch gesture can be used for things like answering phone calls, dismissing alerts, launching active apps from the watch face, controlling your music, or even taking photos. If you enable the shake to dismiss gesture, you'll be able to rotate your wrist twice to decline incoming calls or dismiss alerts such as alarms, timers, and reminders. And the knock knock feature is the most powerful because it not only allows you to open up any app you have installed on your watch, but it also has these custom functions here, including opening up your exercises or even turning on your flashlight. And in case you didn't know, turning on the flashlight literally turns your watch face into a really bright white screen so that you can see in the dark. If you get a notification and the text is just a bit too small for you to read, you can actually double tap the notification and make the text significantly larger. And you can obviously double tap again to make it smaller. If you wear your watch ultra to sleep, it is gonna automatically track your sleep for you, but you might accidentally start interacting with the watch while you're sleeping. To prevent this, pull down your quick toggles, then tap this modes icon and enable sleep mode. This is gonna shut your screen off and make it so you can't interact with the touch screen. And not even the wake up gesture will work with this mode on. The only way to interact with the watch now would be to press one of the buttons. Then you'd also have to tap this turn off option to either turn off sleep mode, or you can swipe across it to get back to your watch and quickly check something, or press the home button again to get back to the watch face. Then when you're ready to go back to sleep, just put your palm on the screen to turn it back off. This next feature is excellent for both those of you who have great eyesight and those of you who don't have the best eyesight. Go ahead and pull your quick toggles down and go to the settings. Then scroll down to accessibility and tap that. Then tap vision enhancements. Then scroll to the bottom and tap font size. Then you can either increase or decrease the font size depending on how good your eyes are. So if you have excellent eyesight, you could reduce the font size all the way down so you could fit way more information on the screen at a time. Or if you have trouble seeing, you could boost this all the way up to make your watch a lot more readable. If you jump into settings, then scroll down to advanced features, you'll see an option at the top called disconnection alerts. And you can change this to a full screen alert with sound and vibration. So anytime your watch disconnects from your phone, you'll get an alert like this. And when you dismiss the alert, 
you get the option to try to find your phone. And this works even if Bluetooth is disabled on your phone. And you even get this option to not get alerts at home. So if you just leave your phone on a counter somewhere and you're often walking in and out of your house and you don't wanna continually be reminded that you don't have your phone next to you, then this is a good setting to turn on. You probably already knew that if you swipe up on your clock face, then long press on an application, you can drag it to another position. But what you might not have known is that you could also long press on an application and drag it on top of a second application to create folders. And if you tap this icon on the side, you can change the color of that folder. And if you tap folder name at the top, you can create a custom name. And this plus icon lets you see all of your applications and you can tap them to add them to the folder. And if I back out of here and go back to my applications, you'll see the folder right there. And if you ever wanna take an application out of the folder, just tap the folder, long press the application, and drag it out of the folder. If you often use multiple timers for cooking, you can set your first timer, then just swipe to the right, then set a new timer either based off of your presets, or you could set one manually. And when you have multiple timers set, you can just swipe through them to see how much time is left on each timer. And you'll also get a shortcut to those timers at the bottom of your watch face, and that'll show all the timers in this little list. And if you wanna set a new timer from here, just swipe down and you can set a new timer. This next feature is so hidden that I just spent the last like 10 or 15 minutes looking for it, even though I knew exactly what I was looking for because I've already used it before. So this next feature is not in the Samsung Health application or in the Galaxy wearable application that comes installed on your phone when you first pair your Galaxy watch to a Samsung device. Instead, it is in the Samsung Health Monitor application. And the first time you open this application, it'll prompt you to install the Samsung Health Monitor on your phone. And once that's done, you'll see this new option here called Sleep Apnea. And this is an incredible feature because most people who have sleep apnea don't even know it. So this is an excellent way to check to see if you might have sleep apnea. Then you can talk to your doctor about it if the results suggest that you do have sleep apnea. And one very important thing to point out is that you shouldn't try using this feature if you're pregnant or have temporary symptoms that impair your breathing like these symptoms listed here. And the reason for that is that it may give you a false positive suggesting that you might have sleep apnea and that might get you all concerned for no reason at all. So once the Samsung Health Monitor app is installed on your phone, just keep going through the setup process here on your watch, then enable the sleep apnea feature. This will give you some suggestions on how to get the best results. And when you tap OK, it'll start tracking sleep apnea for two nights. And once you have two nights worth of results, it'll tell you if it thinks you have sleep apnea or not. And you can see those results in the Samsung Health Monitor application in the View History tab. And while we're talking about these advanced health monitoring features, I should also point out that you can still do an ECG with this watch. Now, this is something that's been around for a while, but I do think it's still worth pointing out. And this feature was actually really handy for me because I do occasionally get a skipped beat followed by a double beat. And this was able to help me capture that and show it to my doctor. Apparently it's pretty common and not a problem at all, but this was certainly helpful in figuring that out. That said, this is not specifically checking for that condition. I just happened to notice it. What this is checking for is signs of atrial fibrillation, which is an entirely different condition than what I have. So don't expect this to alert you of double beats or skipped beats unless you're personally looking through the charts and checking for them. And one more extremely important thing to point out is that this does not check for a heart attack. So if you think you may be having a heart attack, don't try to do any measurements with this. Instead, just call 911 or get to a hospital immediately. You've probably seen a bunch of videos where people suggest replacing the Bixby shortcut with the Google Assistant shortcut on any Galaxy watch. And while that is pretty useful, it's far more useful to instead use both at the same time instead of just one of them. To do that, you first have to swipe up, then go down to the bottom of your applications and tap the Google Assistant application. The first time you tap this, it'll take you through the setup process so you can actually use Google Assistant with one of these buttons. And once that's set up, swipe down from the top to get to your quick toggles, tap the settings gear, then go to buttons and gestures, then scroll down to the home button option and select the press and hold option and change that from Bixby to Google Assistant. Now by default, the double press button just takes you to your most recent application. But the default action for the back button is to show all of your recent applications, which is another really easy way to get back into the app. So instead, you should change this double press action to Bixby. Now, if I press and hold the button, I can talk to Google. And if I double press the button, I can talk to Bixby. The reason this is so important is that Bixby and Google are both extremely powerful for completely different reasons. 
Google's gonna be better for things like setting reminders, searching for things, asking general questions like unit conversions or the weather, or maybe even finding a restaurant nearby. But Bixby is useful for watch specific commands. Let me give you a quick example. If I try to use Google Assistant and say, start a circuit training exercise. Sorry, you don't have any apps installed that support this action. So it says you can't do it. But if I use Bixby, start a circuit training exercise it immediately jumps into a circuit training exercise. So now you can use Bixby for any watch specific things you wanna do and Google Assistant for everything else. If you want access to both Bixby and Google Assistant, but you wanna use the home button for other functions because there are a lot of different things you can do with this home button, you can instead enable voice commands for both Bixby and Google Assistant. To do this, back out of this menu and scroll down to the advanced features menu, then scroll to the bottom of that menu and tap Bixby. Then scroll to the bottom of here and tap settings. Then enable the voice wake up option. And if you tap the voice wake up text, you'll see this other option here called wake up phrase. And if you tap this, you'll be able to shorten the phrase if you'd prefer. To enable voice wake up for Google Assistant, just tap Google directly above advanced features, then assistant, then hit. This will open up a menu on your phone to enable the feature. But keep in mind, using voice wake up for either of these assistants is going to increase the battery consumption on your watch. If you want your watch ultra to feel more like a traditional watch, you could download some more realistic looking watch faces from the Play Store, like maybe one of these four watch faces, and I'll have links in the description to each of these if you're interested. Or you could use one of Samsung's official analog watch faces, swipe it down to see all your quick toggles, and tap the settings icon, then go to sounds and vibrations, and scroll all the way to the bottom, then back up to system sounds, and you'll see this ticking option here. This will add a slight ticking sound to the second hand, adding a bit to the realism. You probably already know that when you swipe down, you get your quick toggles, and if you swipe all the way to the end, you can add some more or long press them and rearrange them. But what you might not have known is that you could long press the toggles and jump right into the settings related to that toggle. And I also wanna point out that you can access those quick toggles from any page as long as you swipe down from the top edge. And if you tap the battery at the very top of the toggle, it'll show you how much battery is left. And if you tap it again, then scroll down about halfway, you see this battery usage option? And this will show you how much battery was used by each application, organized by most battery usage to least. So if you notice that your battery seems to be dying faster than normal, definitely check this menu because you can see if one of your recently installed applications is what's draining your battery. By default, if you press the quick button, it'll bring up all of your exercises. And if you swipe all the way over to the left, you'll see this new multi-sport option, which is great for things like triathlons. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see this add option and you can add exercises, but you're actually limited on the exercises you can add. There's really not that much here. Fortunately, there is a way to create your own custom workout routine, but it is a bit hidden. So first, I'm gonna press this quick button again to go back to all of my exercises. Then I'm gonna scroll all the way to the end and tap this plus icon and scroll down a bit. And there's an option here called create workout routine. If you tap this, you can change the name of your workout routine. And if you scroll down, you can add a warm up. And if you tap the warm up text, you can change how long that warm up is for. Or you can switch to a variable warm up that ends whenever you decide. You can then add some exercises. And if you tap all, you'll be able to see all of the available exercises. And you can have a total of up to 20 exercises in a single routine. And as you add those exercises in, you can set specific targets and you can even add breaks in between each exercise. And if you scroll further down, you can add a cool down. And below that, if you want, you can just disable all of the breaks. And if this is a circuit you wanna repeat multiple times, you can just tap here and select how many times you wanna do the circuit. Then just tap save and your routine will be added. The next hidden feature has to do with what happens when you pair a Galaxy Watch Ultra with Samsung's brand new Galaxy Ring. If you have both the Galaxy Watch Ultra and the Galaxy Ring on, they'll actually work together to increase the total battery life of both devices. So for example, if you're getting better heart rate readings on your watch, the Ring will intelligently turn off its sensors for a bit to save some battery life. But this is far more complex than just turning sensors on and off, and it happens automatically, so you just get better battery life. If you wanna learn more about the Galaxy Ring, you can check out my video on it here, or you could check out this other video if you're not interested in the ring. And let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see more videos like this. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.